What if our hands could talk? Imagine a world where they really could, where girls no longer covered their lips to fit a category that was prescribed to them like a pill bottle by doctors when they found out that she had a uterus where countries were no longer infested with wars, where guns no longer spoke too many languages for civilians to understand, that words are strings of harps, but are also strings of a bullet melting into each other's. To let our hands talk is to hold each other's and spark dialogue. To know our differences and adversities it's to know that every star is different, yet still chooses to converse with the one beside it. Colors on each side of a gem would shine into the shadows of a room where a politician and a young girl sat inside. We pull our words out of us like a strings of tangled sentences, mold them into each other's and create a sculpture of clay with stars stamped on each side, telling us that we are really all on the same side, even if our values beg to defer. So when I say, what if our hands could talk, I mean, what if they could create a labyrinth of trust on the floor of a dusty living room? And most importantly, what if we let them talk. When I was 13 years old, I remember heading out of the bathroom in a frenzy, talking to my mom and finding out that I had just gotten my period. I remember feeling so ashamed and afraid at people's perception of this grown anatomy. The next day, when I went to school, I was afraid of having to slide a pad in my shirt sleeve whenever I needed to go to the washroom. And I knew that I wasn't the only one. All the girls around me would whisper and hunch their backs in secrecy. And we'd tell each other about how much it sucked and how our only excuse that we used was that our aunt always came over. But most importantly, I remember almost gasping when a girl would say the word period a little too loud when a boy was around. Periods are the backbone of our society. Without them, Human reproduction is impossible. So the reason why I'm even here is because my mom had her period. And so did your mom. And so did all the moms on this planet. But unfortunately, periods are still a huge stigma. Millions of girls around the world are told not to speak about them and to be ashamed of them. In fact, nearly 60% of US women feel embarrassed and ashamed to have their periods. Why is this a problem? When I first got my period, I threw my pad in the garbage. But the next day, my grandma told me that my grandpa had complained about how gross it had been and that I should have done it in more secrecy or covered it up more. I felt like an oddball or too different. Shaming any person, whether they have their period or not, tends to bring up insecurities and lower their self-esteem. Shame is the umbrella problem here because it encompasses any term that justifies discrimination based off of gender as just looking out for the girl's hygiene. Number two, girls' education. Did you know that a common reason why girls are not able to maintain themselves at school is because of period poverty and insecurity, which are interlinked? Oftentimes, when a girl doesn't have a pad or a tampon, she doesn't even bother going to school because of how menstrual products are not accessible. Insecurity can be financial, but it's mostly about if everyone can tell you're on your period. I mean, I'm sure we've all had those moments when we're looking at our friends and asking, does it seem like I have a pad on? Periods will never be the problem. It's society's desire to control and socialize women to reject a normal part of their bodies that is the real issue here. But let's be real. Even after showing these repercussions that girls face on a daily basis, the solution isn't something we can do alone. We're going to have to solve this by sparking dialogue with all genders. One of my classmates once told me that the only reason she was ashamed of her period was because of the reaction of boys to it. Were they gonna be disgusted, weirded out? The last thing any young teen wants is to feel ostracized and I couldn't relate more. 
And this isn't to say that we should force boys to talk about a topic that would make them uncomfortable, but instead to let boys voluntarily deconstruct why it makes them uncomfortable in the first place. No judgment needed. Last month, I organized a period discussion group where boys, girls, and non-binary folk alike got to talk about why periods were stigmatized. Even though we didn't have the highest show up rate, one boy in particular was extremely open and curious about the importance of periods. I talked about a phrase that especially bothers me, which is when someone says, is it that time of the month after a girl seems annoyed or angry? When I told the boy in our discussion group about it, he seemed just as annoyed as I was. You see, when we break open the status quo, then we also open ourselves to seeing our similarities, which outshine our differences. At the end of the discussion, he said, this was eye-opening and fun. No judgment was given, and it was an all-around great experience. If we can have more of these discussions in kindergarten, high schools, universities, or any other place, women can feel more comfortable in their bodies and we can pop this shame bubble that has been festering upon societies for far too long. If we want to break the status quo of telling women how and what to feel about their bodies, then we have to first have the conversation. Though we might have different judgments of periods, the most important part is talking about our differences and learning from there. Thank you.